G'day folks, here we are. We're going to have a bit of a let's play on the Salzburg Rosenheim. And we'll be driving a Stadler Flirt 3, which doesn't belong on Salzburg Rosenheim. I just kind of like it. So I made a scenario for this, and it's up on the workshop if you want to play it. I had some challenges getting the scenario working, because um, I made it a little bit too busy. Oh, that's just creepy. I made it a little bit too busy and caused myself no end of dramas with uh, crashing the game. Hello, NJTE and Chicago's Railroads Videos Photography and Jonah and uh, Michael as well, who's not here at the moment. Ah, we've had a few new subscribers too, just while TS is loading. We've had James1416, 13BP Lux, Matt McSee, E575 FHO. Could you get much harder? Chase McCain, Raquel. Raquel subscribed to all my channels, actually, so I had no idea who she is. Um, Cornelius Verva, Devin Singleton, Tyler Pike, Maurice. And we've had a, a, a huge back and forth with great comments from um, Steve Davis and Mark B trying to resolve a Sherman Hill thing. So, welcome to the Stadler Flirt. Let me get the doors open. Get into forwards. And I'll turn on CIFA, which is this one. But I'm not going to turn on um, PZB in, in this particular loco, because I've discovered it has somewhat shattering consequences when you get it wrong. Oh, I haven't had a chance to have a look at your scenario yet, NJTE. I will. It's in the queue. It's, uh, I've got a couple of thing, other things to do today, and I have to do some stuff for the Ambassadors. Let's get out of here. We're leaving Salzburg HBF, which is a really nicely modelled station, but, man, does it kill the frame rate. <laughs> you can see how... Um, yeah, oh, you can just see what it's like. <laughs> it's so detailed, and um, I'm, I'm sure they've done their best to optimise it, but it just really takes out the frame rate. Now, I really like this train. That's why I put it on here. The trains that come with this route, my impression is this route is a stage. It's not um, It's not actually given to you in a fully drivable condition. And what I mean by that is the, the trains that come with it, um, there's one very nicely modelled OBB, but you can't drive it because it hasn't actually got any interior. Um, so you can't control it. It's purely for AI. And the other two trains are from the really old European Assets Pack, which go right back to the Kuju days, which is 2004, something like that. <laughs> it's a fair while ago. So what I've done is I've, I've put some stuff from uh, Lübeck and from Frankfurt and a couple of other German routes into this one and that's what you're going to be seeing today and you'll see some of the stuff that comes with the route parked on the side and you will see their OBB now even though I haven't got PZB turned on I am going to acknowledge stuff now the route's pretty nice I'll just acknowledge this one. Let me get to this station up here and stop. I'll um, just fly up in the air and show you what I mean. Uh, Chicago's is Metro 8473 Productions names. Actually, Chase Hamilton. Well, there you go. Maybe that's who it was. Actually, no, it was Chase McCain who um, subscribed. And NJTE asking about doing a Creators Club stream next week. I don't actually have anything scheduled because I was planning on doing something else, but that has not quite come to fruition. So, yeah, probably could do something with Creators Club. What are your thoughts? Here's our first station stop. Actually, I don't know why I've got the HUD turned off. Oops. Too much HUD. Too much HUD. Too much HUD. It's not the HUD I wanted. I want that HUD. Oops. I just messed up my stop a little bit. It's a nice little freight train coming along here. Let's get this to the end of the platform too. It's going to power up again and let me, which is cool. 
what would you like to see in a Creators Club stream? All right, now we can stop. OBB is a German operator. Let's just fly up in the air. So you can see the um, the city around Salzburg is modelled fairly nicely. The distant scenery is um, on a par with a Rosa, I guess. But up close, it's pretty good. They've um, certainly put a bit of effort into it, I think. The route, for the most part, runs well. You've got to be a little bit careful in some places because um, you fall through the world if you're not that careful. Now, I've deliberately set this scenario up with um, some surprise wrong rail running, which I still haven't gotten used to. Now, Chicago's asking about Peninsula Corridor next week. So that could be a possibility for Creators Club, if anybody's seen any really nice liveries. I've seen a few that have um, already gotten removed from Creators Club for being naughty so can't play those ones they're gone someone did a very nice go transit one on the baby bullet but um unfortunately that's not one of the brands they're allowed to use so it's gone now and i was running a little bit late there so we just missed the um 101 hauled ice 2 that was sitting over on the side there sorry ice 2 ice tea you heard it but we didn't see it because I was a bit late. I actually haven't got the Chicago route for the racetrack. Yeah, I don't own that DLC. loading our little passengers not much happens in TS when you load passengers basically just the doors open the people don't move around and hopefully we'll get through to the end of this without um, TS having hiccups because my initial version of this scenario that's a pretty serious bumpy bit of track back there you wouldn't want to hit that at high speed my initial version of this scenario, I was, um, let's just say a little too adventurous for TS. And I made it crash a lot. So we're now running wrong rail against the signals. So NJTE says he's skipping 72 scenario, which is uh, one he asked me to run in one of the comments on one of the other videos is a Baker Loon Line train that has arrived at Queen's Park and st all stations except Wilsdon Junction and Harrow and I can't remember what the last one is. Wheelstone or something like that? It's been a while since I've touched Baker Loo. Have you got other trains in your scenario in JTE or just that one? I suppose in Baker Loo it probably doesn't matter that much when you're below ground because you can't, can't see them anyway. Heading up to the Euro Park, which is a uh, concept very familiar to lots of parts of Europe and America. And it's starting to happen in Australia where the um, station is part of just a gigantic car park where you go and you drive from wherever you live to one of these hub stations and leave your car there and take your train into work or wherever it is you're going. It's become quite a popular concept around the world.
I guess everything will come to TS sooner or later. Or TSW. How did you make it 20 minutes late in JTE, or is that just um, something implied by the scenario? Uh, Jonah, I do have Washington to Baltimore, I believe. So, yes, could. That's on TS. And Chicago saying instead of five cars in service mode, limit between six and nine, but MBTA has a limit of eight. Metro has a limit of 10 to 12 cars. Trains usually five to eight cars on weekends. Yeah, we used to do that with the um, Melbourne railways, but now we run full length trains all the time. They don't pull them apart anymore. They actually worked out that it costs more to pull them apart and put them back together again than they save by running them. So they just run the um, full... 18 and 20 car trains all the time. I like some of the modelling you see line side around here. It's very colourful. Salzburg's obviously a colourful city. Hopefully no one bombs the shit out of it like is happening to some people I know. Whoops. Sipa just got me because on this train... See if it doesn't sound outside the train. That train going past there was the AI that you get with this route. Are you going to power up train? No, you're not. Because you came out of forwards. There we go. Yeah, I spent the morning on my little railway yesterday, Puffing Billy. Yet again doing track patrol. That yellow signal's not for me. The track patrol was okay, but sadly someone had broken into some of the buildings overnight. Never good. Yeah, steam days were a little bit different. In steam days, there were a few trains, but they were much bigger. That was pretty much universal all around the world. I was just responding to um, Chicago's comment that trains could be 12 to 22 cars. There are still some long ones. Some of the Amtrak ones that start from one city with two, three, or even four trains joined together, and they split them up throughout the route. I don't know that it'll actually help, Jonah. I doubt they really care. Yep, bit of slippage going on. Just trying to get back on schedule, so I come into the station pretty hot then. Yeah, modern railways are very different to the railways of the past. Modern railways tend to have more smaller trains spaced relatively evenly throughout the day, whereas older railways would run big ones and they didn't run very often. So now we're in a more suburban industrial area. We've got this yard here, so let's just go over and have a look. I've plonked a few trains in to make it look a little busy. Now, interestingly, there's um, something banal about, the, <laughs> about putting this scenario together, because this particular train here, he's supposed to leave. 
But his pantographs go down as soon as he's fawned, so he can't. But right now he's sitting there trying to leave. But he can't. Oh well. Who knows? Oh, okay, NJTE. Yeah, I was wondering if you'd managed to affect the timetable in some way. The um, creation of scenarios in TSW is more about descriptions and implications than actuality. Currently. I'm looking forward to a future change to the scenario editor. I know when they called for um, feedback, I put in a massive list of stuff that I'd like to be able to do very detailed list and we're back running wrong rail again this is actually a mistake I had in the scenario here it's not meant to be running wrong rail here but for some reason it does and despite my putting in a go via but that's okay so now we're out in a um, very suburban area timber appears to be very popular in this place, as industries go. So I should ask, what is everybody's, let's start with the uh, favorite train. What's your favorite actual train? And then we'll move on to some other things. Somewhere along here, I'll have to change onto the other track, and I can't remember exactly where it is. So I'm just hoping that red signal doesn't mean it's soon. Germans don't honk for crossings, but I'm not German, so I will. A bit of fun. So if I look near home, my favourite train is obviously the little railway that I work on, which is Puffing Billy, which you can Google that if you want to. It's, um, we've got five, they're very similar to um, Baldwin Prairie locomotives, but they were built locally in Australia. Australia used to be like that a couple of centuries ago. Our big claim to fame was stealing everybody else's stuff. We tend to behave a little more properly in the world scene these days. My favourite train visiting from anywhere else, I really like the R32s on uh, the US subway there's I don't think there's anything any in operation anymore but I got to play with one in the um, Court Street Transit Museum which was a bit of fun and my favorite rail line outside of Australia is the uh, New York F just simply because you can go to a place where you can get hot dogs and beer by the beach and that's a winner in my book NJTE says his favourite train is the GP40PH2 and the 2A and the 2B. So you love your GP40s. Bit of a Jeep fan. And Chicago's uh, hasn't actually said which one he likes yet. He's still talking about the Empire Builder. Jonah's talking about the GP40WH-2 and there's only one left on his local railroad, Mark. I assume it's pronounced Mark, and you don't just say M-A-R-C. Much to my amazement, I made the speed limit change then. So very quickly, We've gotten out into the rural countryside in this route, and most of this route actually is quite rural like this. So, expect farms and trees. The countryside is still fairly undulating. So it's still interesting to drive. Ah, cool, so you do say Mark. There is still one full train of R32s. Actually, there's two that still run. There's a preserved one 
and it lives somewhere in Harlem. One of the yards in Harlem is where it stays, and occasionally it, it comes out for runs. Uh, but there's another one that's been converted to a garbage train. That one's still alive. And we are now approaching Tiesendorf, a little town. I like the look of the new ones you've got in JT. I think that they're R700s, I think, something like that. They look quite good. And judging by the 40 limit that's just taken me by surprise, we're changing tracks here. Haha. -ha. Failed to derail. It's interesting you call them the preachers of the Transit Museum. Ah, preserved. Yep, okay. <laughs> that makes more sense. If you're ever in um, New York, wander over to Brooklyn and have a look at the, the Transit Museum that's in the Court Street subway station. It's not a station that's actually used anymore, although you can certainly hear the trains going around it. But just the lineup of stock that's in there all coupled together is quite cool. And they change it all the time because they keep a whole lot of things in the tunnels and there's more in yards outside. So it changes quite a bit. I'm going to stop train. Yeah, now it'd be good. Thank you. Oh, we didn't miss the platform by too much. All their doors are on the platform. Except that one didn't open. Exciting. But just having a look around while we're stopped. Some kind of factory complex. Still using wood. Yeah. Apparently it's time to go. Better do that. Should we go with it? Probably. They do indeed have a collection of buses. They have a bunch of stuff in that museum. It, it's quite surprising what you find in there, actually. You just wouldn't expect it. Just route-wise, we are about a third of the way through now. I thought that was a lake, but I guess it's a field.
I was all set to come back to New York in 2020, but we all know what happened. The zombie apocalypse. So I'm guessing, Chicago, your favourite route would be the racetrack. One of the reasons I'm really looking forward to um, Horseshoe Curve coming out is the possibility for uh, parallel running of three trains. That will be cool. I've put a couple of liveries into the Creators Club and I've put my... Um, well, some actually, I haven't put them all, but some of my Cathcart speedrun scenarios in. Which does seem to be getting quite a lot of subscribers, so I guess there's more speedrun people out there than you'd think. If you've never heard of a speedrun, the, um, the, there's two ways to, to do it. One is to go as fast as you can, but maintain the speed limit at all times, and get the best time possible from start to stop. And in the case of Cathcart, because it's a circle, you um, start and stop at the same place. So one, you leave platform 10 and you arrive platform 9. All of my scenarios do that. Um, I interestingly, the game takes some of them east around the loop and it takes some of them west around the loop. And I've never really figured out why. It just seems to do it. And I just go with the flow. Uh, the other way to play a speed run is to go as fast as you can and still arrive intact at the other end and succeed in stopping before you hit the buffers at the end of the platform. And you can play either way. Whatever your heart's content is. So I'm kind of hoping that people are enjoying my speedrun scenarios. I've also put one in for Sandpatch Grade called Tanks for the Memories, which is a um, a server or it's a sorry a block train of um, tanker cars getting hauled up the hill. That one is meant to have my um, my branded locomotive on the front, but it turns up on the route, but it never seems to turn up in the scenario, so I don't quite get what's going on there. It looks like there's some things that don't stick, so if you run a scenario yourself, if you choose the weather in service mode and then go into tools and run a scenario, you'll have the weather that you last had in service mode, and that doesn't carry over when you publish the scenario, which that would be a, a, a nice future feature. And the other thing that would be a nice future feature is um, actually being able to force the rolling stock. So that if you want to run it with a particular livery, you can. And it is interesting browsing what people have done. There are some amazingly creative people on the livery front. There's some very cool things. We can have a quick look at um, Creators Club at the end of this. And just see what sort of things are turning up there. I didn't look yesterday because I was a little busy on the real railway and then trying to um, trying not to fail on Sherman Hill. And I succeeded in failing four times, but I only published one of them. And it's cut down fails. You don't have to watch the whole two hours of fail. You, it's uh, cleaned up. Hello, Mark B. How are you? Welcome. I mentioned earlier that um, you and I and Steve have had a, a very interesting conversation about Sherman Hill. And on the cards for later today, after I do some work, because I actually have to go to work today, which is sad given it's a Sunday, but I do. I'll be having another crack at that. And this time I'll turn on the Genfield switches and see how I go. 
I, I've become quite convinced there's actually something wrong with the train because it shouldn't behave the way it's behaving. And I don't think it's um, unknown knowledge that I am one of the beta testers, so I am gathering information. That's why I keep doing these runs with diff different ways of trying to do it and different switch settings and different approaches to the issue because all of those will help the people who will try and eventually fix the problem. Yeah, my Saturday was yesterday, Jonah. Yeah, we can go and have a look at Creators Club at the end of this. What would be cool, since uh, there's some interest in a Creators Club stream next week, perhaps if you put in the comments on this one when it, when it goes up and you can comment on it, uh, if you have particular people that you think I should look at um, particular scenarios you think I should look at and particular liveries you think I should look at and we can go in there and try and find them unfortunately there aren't sharing links yet I had a chat with JD on the ambassador channel on um, what would be the possibility of getting sharing links and it's something they're interested in Because it would be nice, because I, I don't know if you realise it, but you can actually get to Creators Club through the website. You don't have to be playing the game to look at it. And you can't subscribe yet on the website, you can only look. But what would be really cool, regardless of your platform, is if someone sends you a link and you go look at the website, you know, on, on your computer or on your phone, or even on your console, because you know, consoles can browse the web, and subscribe through the site and it turns up in your game next time you play, that would be really cool. I would certainly enjoy that. I suppose I should actually slow down for this. And just put myself into emergency braking by accident there. Slowing down a little quickly. Bit of bridge porn. Whee! Whoop. Trees. You have to like a train going over a bridge, don't you? Quiet, Sufa. Uh, just sing us uh, welcome, a new voice. Sherman Hill tried that run today myself. Not changed setup of the trailing locos at all. Six active, eighty-five kilopounds of force, and needed to maintain speed. Wheel trip pretends to appear at eighty-two and a half, but won't actually do anything at least until eighty-five. So, blaming the adhesion system. Yeah, in the the adhesion system is certainly a bit weird, and that's why I'm kind of convinced there's actually something wrong. Uh, so you didn't touch any right behind the train. Okay. Um, they are definitely set up wrong, but I don't think the game actually cares. I don't think it looks at them. So in your... In any loco that's not your lead loco, of American Outline anyway, the fuel pump and control should be on. Because... Well, it's sometimes labelled engine run. <laughs> should be on. Because if they're not, the diesel can't run. <laughs> it's that simple. The actual engine in the train will not run. Um, you don't need to, you shouldn't need to put Genfield on on anything else. Now, in the train I looked at, Mark B, they actually did have those switches on in the rear. So they had all three switches turned on, on the one that I was playing. So if they're different, that's a bit weird. Yeah, but if we go back to real life, and I have actually confirmed this with a real life freight engineer that I know, um, I had the impression that only the lead truck will suffer much in the way of adhesion problems because it's breaking up the snow and the ice that's on the rail. Now, if there's really heavy icing on the rail, um, it will impact the others, but that would be unusual. That would be a line that's not used very much, and Sherman Hill's used a lot. So you would expect that the lead truck would be able to break up the light coating of icing on the rail. And that's why you've got lead truck sander switches. So that the sand stays on on the lead truck continuously in that sort of circumstance. Just pop 
pop out of the train briefly. So we're in another smallish rural city. Modelled fairly nicely. Another train that should be moving that's not. We're either early or late, so it's either gotten to where it's going or it's um, not ready to go yet, one or the other. It's the fun of building scenarios in TS is everything's done on times rather than actions. One of the things I've asked for in a future scenario editor for TSW is that you can do things on actions. So you'd have a train sitting there and when it sees another train, then it'll start doing something. So that way you're not so dependent on running on time. But it's in the giant list of stuff that I'm sure many, many, many people are asking for. So who knows whether we'll get it or not. That's interesting to sing us, because um, that's not what I've got in my operating manual. Only the gen switch should be off in the others. Unless you're running, um, if you're running really modern stuff that's got auto start, then yeah, they, they get taken over completely and there's no need for anybody to do anything in those cabs. You can hook up to a completely dead loco, plug in your interconnecting MU cables and the, the dead one will start because the, the leading one will tell it what to do. <laughs> but in the older stuff, you did actually have to have them on. And there's still stuff running around today where you have to have them on. So it's kind of an interesting situation. Hello, Michael. Welcome along. I think, Mark, on, on the next run, I'll, I've been using the um, three camera to go and peer in the window on the rear locos. So I might actually go for a walk down there before I try it on this afternoon's run. And I'll have a look because there is always the chance that they are different when you climb into the cab versus when you're looking through the window. That the the weird thing about those locos is if you go if you stick your head in the window and you look at the displays on the locos, they're definitely powering. So it shouldn't make any difference, but I absolutely accept that it does. Just, I just think it's a bit broken. <laughs> All right, Jonah, enjoy yourself, stay safe. Try and avoid Ukraine. That's interesting to see us. I wonder if that's particular locomotives that um, have a mechanical fuel pump and an electric fuel pump, and the electric fuel pump's only used for priming and starting. That's quite possible. I know the diesels on the railway I work on, they only have the mechanical pump that actually runs off the engine itself. So when you want to start it, you... Um, that was a bit too much stopping power there. When you want to start it, you actually have to hand pump up the pressure with the thing that's remarkably like a little tiny bike pump. And it can be very, very difficult because you're pressurizing a liquid that doesn't like to be compressed. And it's easy to get pull the pump out too far and uh, get stuck. Then you've got to wait for the pressure to bleed off and try again. Because you can't screw the pump handle back in. It's interesting we're driving a train in Germany and we spent the entire time talking about America. Nice life. This is a really nicely modelled station over here, wherever it went. I'll just concentrate on stopping and we'll go look at it. How about that? 
since my attempt to go look at it failed absolutely miserably there. All right, let's go look at that building back here somewhere. So you've got the modern part of it. And then the old building, which is quite nicely modelled. I've never seen this building turn up in TS before, so I'm guessing it's a, it's a purpose-built asset just for this one. And for the most part, um, just seeing as if you're looking at one SD40, it's going to be fairly similar to the next one on a different railway. Um, we do have SD40 alikes here as well. Because, of course, the, the manufacturers of these things are quite popular around the world. But they do have subtle differences. But generally, the main things tend to stay the same because every railway or railroad has its... Um, particular things that they like to have and particular ways they like working the there's many generations of in-cab signaling there's different versions of ATC there's different versions of Axis there's um, there's actually a new thing coming to the US the European train control system is coming to America as well we've got that running on a couple of lines in Australia now so that's that's likely to become ubiquitous at some point hmm, I have a yellow this must be another one of my random line changes I'm guessing we're flipping over coming through this crossover. I thought about putting some more go vias into this scenario to um stop all the changing from line to line then I thought no it's actually fun so I left it this way you really have to think about it and try and get down to a speed where you won't derail so Michael we've been talking about Sherman Hill and my intense degree of failure and we've also been talking about what is the, your favourite railway or railroad around around the world. It doesn't have to be one that's in game, it can be anything. How are we going on the route? We are two thirds of the way through going quite quickly. You know, I'm being naughty again. Michael likes CP. Canadian Pacific. I have to think, my favourite Canadian railway is um, going to be the Rocky Mountain one. Just because of the amazing scenery. I've done a little bit of US mountain railroading because the um, Coast Daylight and the Coast Starlight do run through the mountains early on in the piece before they get into the uh, the endless sand. <laughs> south of that I 
So what notch are you on to keep it at 85 to sing us? Yep, bridge pawn. Like a good bridge. Bridges, viaducts. Um, I'm meant to be in the cab game. Thank you. And I'm also meant to be slowing down. I might have to use some real brakes for this. Otherwise, we're not going to make it. <laughs> all right, I'm just going to let that wheel slip happen because we've got all the braking on. No, the chat link's not up, Michael. I was actually doing some work, so I didn't have much time to set stuff up. We've just had a um, new system go live. For those of you who don't know, my day job is in IT. And I was testing some APIs to make sure they actually work for the new system. And I have to finish that after I do this, because I'm partway through and there's a whole team of people going, where did he go? <laughs> but you know, I'm doing this. It's more fun. Sunday, you can do what I want. Yeah, on my runs, just seeing as I've actually lost it at in notch eight, seven, and six. So it runs really well. The the excuse me, I've got hiccups. The um, failure run yesterday was the furthest I've got, and that one was going quite well. And then all of a sudden, it just lost it, and it was not recoverable. What might be some interesting discussion, NJT, is um, what do people think is a good scenario? I'll kick off the discussion, because I'm 20 seconds ahead of you guys. Um, I kind of think a good scenario is one where you see a lot of other trains, and while it's, I'm going to say it's not possible in, in TSW currently in the way you build scenarios, but I like to pass trains, so... Either I get sidelined or someone gets sidelined for me. You can do that in TS if you try hard enough. But um, can't really do it in TSW. Yeah, using the direct brake is, is actually a real life way of controlling wheel slip. It just puts a little bit of retardation on it. Now, I think to get the wheel slip to stop, I probably applied more than is prototypical because normally you just put a very small amount of pressure on it. Um, in some cases, I was succeeding at seven pounds, which is a minimum application. And at others, I was getting up to um, nine, 10 pounds, which real reality is actually gonna start stopping your train, especially when you're going uphill and did. So are you getting through that particular service at the 848 Cheyenne to Hermosa in full snow? So to, to start that, um, you need to turn on all, go into January and turn on all the weather sliders to the maximum. Any other month, it actually seems to be okay. Interestingly, those trains are um, those trains are computer controlled. So if you get wheel slip, the train should automatically modulate the power to actually stop you getting wheel slip. But that doesn't seem to be modelled in game. I could set a run going 
just seeing as while I'm working. Um, and maybe just send it up the hill in notch five and see what happens. And not actually use the higher notches. Oops, I'm changing lines. This is going to get messy. Whee! Are we going to make it? Oh. That might have just been a little bit uncomfortable for the passengers then. Now I'm waiting for this to reset so I can power again. Because we had Zwang Bremsung. Which is German for you're an idiot, so I've put the brakes on for you. There we go. Now I can power again. What are you playing on, Jasing? Are you playing on PC or a particular console? I'm curious if it's different than different platforms. And in, and if you're on PC, um, no, it shouldn't actually be able to get up to 85 in Notch 5. The most you should get is about 54. Um, if you're playing on PC, are you Steam, Epic, or Microsoft build? And yes, if you didn't know, there's a Microsoft build. I'm not quite sure when that appeared, but there is one in the Microsoft Store. So we're actually doing pretty well in this run. We're not too far off the end. We'll start seeing some more trains shortly. I had a whole lot more in my original version of this scenario, but it was just a little bit too much for TS. You were passing one about every three minutes. And it just made things explode. I got through once. And I recorded that once. And I have it sitting on standby on a um, button on my stream deck. So if this crashes, we're going live with that. <laughs> so you're on the Steam build. Yeah, it's the same as me. It's really interesting that um, different people have such different experiences. Because you'd think that shouldn't be, but obviously it is. We're going to finish this a bit early, you know, because we're actually almost at the end of this route. We could always have a crack at Sherman Hill. It only takes about 25 minutes to get to the prob problematic area. And since I'm going to swap over to TSW anyway to go and have a look at Creators Club... I'm just trying to think, what build have I got loaded at the moment? I will check that off screen. <laughs> yes, your comments are here, NJTE. They certainly are appearing. The last one I saw was about buses. around this area while it's so in another little rural town quite pretty quite nicely modeled I just realised the curse is going out on stream today. I don't think it normally does. Okay. Life. I'll put it over there. I 
Yeah, I think we're, we're definitely near to the physics limits in the game, Singer, so I agree with that. And maybe you get different things happening for different people because there could be elements of randomness in the weather, there could be elements of randomness in the uh, adhesion system, which could explain why it's different for different folk. Oh, lose that last K, there we go. Bales of tractor poo. So we're very much in the country now, but we're not too far from our final destination. If we have a look at the route, we've uh, come a fair way. Oops, see far. So, you know, we're not too far. And yes, the train's called Flirty One. It's not my fault. Well, okay, it is. I had a lot of trouble uploading this scenario, I have to say. In the um, workshop description, I had to actually change it to FLRT, even though flirt is the real name of a train, because workshop didn't like the word flirt. And I wouldn't have thought flirt should be such a forbidden word, really. It's not as though it's the uh, trains running in the UK town of Scunthorpe or anything. Yeah, as a general statement, yes, I'd go with TSW does have better physics because in TSW, the physics is done across the board. It's the core engine doing the physics. Um, TS does have core engine physics, but a lot of the stuff that you think is game physics is actually Lua scripting on the locomotive where people have written their own code for the loco. So the ones that behave really, really well in TS have got their own physics code. And that's the more modern stuff. I wonder if DTG would ever think about open sourcing TS when they eventually get bored of it. Yeah, I run 200. It's not as realistic as you'd um, think, but it gives the impression of realism. And what I mean by that is in a real cab, when you're looking at cab sway, yeah, the cab's moving around, but so are you. So you're doing this all the time. So your view out the window actually stays pretty much the same. There's a nice little garden. A few cars parked in the garden, though. How do you reckon that blue one gets out? There's enough room to get that blue one out. I reckon he's stuck there. And he's going to come out at the end of the day and he's going to go, well, I'm a bit stuffed. There's a lot of cars parked in just random places on this route. They're everywhere. Oh, well. Away we go. We should see... another ICE soon. You should see an ICE, another local... <laughs> yeah, who knows, maybe they are. Um, you should see an ICE, another local, and another freight as we get up to this end of the route. If everything goes to plan, never does, because this is streaming. Streams don't go to plan. It just doesn't happen. It 
So which are the upcoming routes in TSW are you most looking forward to? So the ones that have been announced, we've got Spirit of Steam, we've got Lucerne, we've got uh, Horseshoe Curve, and we've got the new New York... I do believe I can see a train. Now we go outside for this train to come past. Let's sit down here between them and I hope, see if it doesn't go off because I'll die. Well, there goes the local passenger. So we should still see an ice and a freight. The local passenger has somehow managed to get out in front of the ice, so I don't know what's going on there. Because the ice should have been first. Must have got stuck behind a signal somewhere. So you're looking forward to Horseshoe and then Spirit of Stream, Steam, Michael, followed by New York. Which is the other US route, as you've put it. Yeah, I kind of think that's right, Jasingus. It does feel like that, doesn't it? It's certainly the impression you get as a player. I know in the old diesels we run it on puff, if you um, start to slip, you just burn a hole in the track. There is no saving you. Now approaching Bad Endorf, ladies and gentlemen. It's where the Ewoks live. Little German Ewoks. Yeah, there is Lucerne coming up. The trains look quite nice. They um, released a new video this morning of how they put a model together. I actually think Rivet do okay. There are certainly people on the forums who I just ignore now because, to be honest, it wouldn't matter what Rivet did. They could bring out the best thing ever that would be the absolute best loco, best route, best everything, and these same eight people would still just bash the crap out of them. So I just ignore those people now. Because the only thing they're interested in is themselves. Hello, Epic the 112. More tractor poo on the right here. Yeah, modern traction system should um, simply moderate the power going to the traction motors. And potentially it would actually... I know on electric trains, I don't know if there's any diesels that do this, but on electric trains they actually use... They'll independently brake wheels the same way ABS works in a car. It's actually quite common in EMUs. And that's mostly because nearly all the EMUs have Siemens control systems these days. And Epic 112 can possibly see a 116 kilometer or 72 mile Hopstreck Munchen Salzburg with selected OBB locomotives, changing the Verka Dresden OBB and some of the Colin Arkin trains. It'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Maybe they could onboard RSS LO into the TSW2 world and get them to start making routes for um, TSW. Because I don't know if you've looked at their stuff. They're quite prolific. Yeah, I think you're right, Michael. They would still find a way to bash them. And it's it's gotten to the point where it's just rubbish. It's not the slightest element of fairness about it. So 
Skyhook are doing all right. Um, it's nice that they elected to sit on Sherman Hill for a little while while they work on it. Not Sherman Hill. Or oh, shoe, sorry. Wrong route. Now, let's see if the scenario works this time, because he is supposed to leave. Uh, actually, we're here too early. He's not going to go for another three minutes. And I want to get up the other end and see what happened to that ice. Did it get stuck behind a red signal or what? Because I haven't seen it and should have by now. I can't see anybody implementing all of ATC. Uh, oh, sorry, all of ATCS yet. I think what I would expect is to see elements of it. Because the whole thing is as complex as um, the American ATC and Axis combined. And it needs a lot of work in the route to make it work properly. It needs all the signaling system to work properly. And I know if you've looked at the, um, the Boston route, Cactus Juice has been toiling away on that one in the background to fix all the signaling so that ATC and Axis actually work properly all the time. And that requires a lot of effort. And it potentially needs things that the game can't deliver yet. So I'll be interested to see where they go. Because of course, Rivet can't change the core. They can only do their route. But I think whatever they come up with, it'll be um, a nice to have in the game simply because it'll be different and it'll be something new that we haven't played with before. And it will open the door to um, having that functionality on future European trains, which will be really good. And I think there'll be a lot of learning involved you know, in GT, I am actually kind of surprised that um, there isn't a New Jersey route for TSW, to be honest, because they have a pretty good relationship with New Jersey Transit. But I've never seen any mention of it anywhere. So even though we're almost at the end of the route, we're approaching our last platform. We are very much out in the country again. Big lake. Half a forest. The Raritan Valley Line from Epic and the 112. Would that be your favourite one? I'd be interested in people's comments because I know that um, potentially because of the time I stream, a lot of people watch this later. Usually get 50 to 60 views after the stream. So pop in the comments what your favourite uh, route and favourite train is, if you like. I'm kind of curious. The people who are in the chat now might think about popping that into the comments too. Yeah, Rosenheim is kind of a place on the way to a place. We're going to come out of these curvy bits shortly and we can speed up again. Let 
There's the 14 signs. We'll go have a look, NJTE. If I can find it. But I will have to check um, when I change games. I'll go on to the the be right back screen because I, I actually can't remember which build I've got at the moment. And if it's not the public build, I can't show it. So if it's the public build, we'll, we'll definitely go and have a look at Creators Club after this. And we might have a quick crack at Sherman Hill. Um, but if it's the... If it's the other one, then I can't do that because it takes about an hour to swap. And I don't think anybody's going to want to sit there waiting for Steam to download that. Even me. I think I've got the public one on at the moment. So it'll be all right. Hello, Chicago. Welcome back. Seven kilometers to go. A lot of timber mills up this end of the world again. I wonder how many of them still have fireplaces. We still haven't seen that I saw the freight. We're kind of wondering what's happened to them. Should have seen them both by now. Something weird going on. And I'm more, I'm a little bit behind my timetable, but not much. If you play this scenario, um, don't turn on PZB on this train. Even though I'm acknowledging the, the PZB signalling, I haven't got it turned on deliberately because the train dies sometimes. It does appear like they've taken the day off, Michael. Maybe they're on strike. Oops. Too much. Coming into platform nine, apparently. Grumpy speeding warnings. Bridge. Hey, there it is. You watch, Cifra will stop my train now. Yep, Cifra's stopping the train because I didn't hear it. Well, we finally see the ICE, but we're still missing the freight. And Sifa has stopped me on the other side of the bridge there.
Yeah, chuck in a bit of alcohol and you can make it a Long Island iced tea. They're very colourful electricity pylons. And what's funny is they just seem to end. Look at that. They just end. <laughs> Why did it list me as speeding when I'm doing 63 kilometres an hour in a 100 zone? What is going on, TS? And where's my freight train? I'm not going to see it now. It must be sitting in the yard here somewhere. There it is. I can see it over there on the left. It must be stuck. Welcome to Rosenheim, ladies and gentlemen. Collect your crap together and get off my train. No luggage in JTE. You're a smart traveller. If you're like most people, you'll just need to um, unplug all your cables from the train and stop charging your phone and get ready to go. Quiet, Sifa. Just before I open the doors, because it's going to complete the scenario. So this little guy is sitting here with his lights on. Like he's supposed to move. And that would be because he is supposed to be moving. But he's obviously not. And this train over here, the one with the OBB locos on the front which has got its pantographs up. We were supposed to see this train full of tractors. But I do not see a driver in it, so I don't know what's going on there. But I do see a driver in this one. So, uh, yeah, who knows. But it's the one with the tractors that's supposed to, we were supposed to see. Yeah, life. That's okay. Let's get the doors open so the scenario finishes. So Jasingas has done a wheels a rolling test for Sherman Hill. HUD shows wheel slip at 80, 82, but actual slip isn't happening till around 88 with outbreak usage. The train seems to more or less good slip protection. Uh, when you're building scenarios for... Yay, we finished! Um, when you're building scenarios for TS, it's a little bit hit and miss. So let me just chuck on my Be Right Back screen and I will change games and I'll just make sure I've got a public build on. So I will... Uh, I'll go on the Be Right Back screen. I've switched my mic on as well so I can keep chatting to you while I change games. I hope you enjoyed the Salzburg to Rosenheim. Just wait for Steam to figure out that it has stopped, and it has. Loading up TS. And I bet it's reset rail driver so that it's ready. Uh. 
All right, it's nearly there. Let me just check the build. And it is a public build. And let me just check what route so I can see. Uh, yeah, there's nothing that's not released. So all good. We are back. Sorry about doing that, but, you know, I've got to be careful. Otherwise, I'll get my ass kicked. So this is Creators Club. That's cool. That's <laughs> very colourful. The legendary 313 is a... Uh, I think that was in one of the competitions at one point, that one. So certainly some interesting stuff. It looks like the uh, red and white German trains are very popular. There's the 72 turned into a Munich U-Bahn. Excellent. So we need to try and find NJTE. How are we going to do that? Hmm. Can we search for a person? Let's see what happens. I've never tried. Oops. No, you can't do that. No. So had, what's your stuff called, NJTE? You think you had one with 72 in the name. That's a bizarre one. Inspection train. <laughs> you know, I'm impressed. I am actually impressed. I need a Pikachu train. I really do. Oh, we want to look for Metro liveries. So this is skipping 72. This is your one. And you've got rain turned on, but weather doesn't carry over into these scenarios. You've arrived at Queen's Park 20 minutes late. Dispatchers told you to skip all stations to Harrow and Wheelstone with the intermediate stop at Wilsdon Junction. Recommended weather, light rain, preferably in April. Duration 13 to 15 minutes. Difficulty easy. Requirements, New Journeys Expansions Pack. New Journeys is required for a Easter egg. Uh, let, I'll pop that on there. I don't know if we'll play it now, but um, I'll have a look. And for we want to look at Metro liveries. How did I get in here? I don't think that's actually looking for Metro. There's ME Trans, but no Metra. That's sad. No one's done one yet. You want me to try up a case, do you? I don't think it'll make any difference. No, that's the only one. And we can try with spaces. No. Nah. You want to look at your... Uh, your profile, do you, in JTE? So what else have you made? A debranded 378. Yeah, I had to do some debranding on mine. So um, to make sure mine didn't get removed, if I come back out here, look at mine. I have the unbranded, there should be a VR probably see it better in this one there should be a vr inside there but um no nah, you can't publish that which is actually a little bit sad because it's a public domain brand these days and of course there's my pink one you have to go drive my pink one <laughs> hey look people have subscribed to it i really didn't think anybody would but you know they obviously have the cathcart runs seem relatively popular the uh Thanks for helping out. It's quite popular. 68. I'm pretty happy with that. Not a lot of Gronk fans. Now, in, interestingly, this one is actually quite hard if you want to do a speed run because in the Gronk, at about 22 and a half to 23 mile an hour, it shuts off because you're going too fast. So you've got to stay under that and still go as fast as you can. 
Uh, what else can we see in here? Let's go have a look at some liveries. So the most popular stuff. Now that would have taken some effort. That's some pretty serious work there. I like that. That's clever. That's someone who um, thinks really well with shapes. Yeah, I know Moggy likes Gronks. We've got a Tropicana Reefer. It's going to be full of orange juice. It's interesting how my top thing's gone spinny spinny. 148 pages of liveries now. That's, that's amazing. That's really taken off, hasn't it? Oh, some Rio Grande liveries. Good to see. Network Rail. Was that one of the brands we were allowed to use? Hmm. That may disappear. What else have we got? Procore. And this will be an unbranded Northern Southern, right? But they've pulled all the branding off it because they've covered it up. You know, they, they really should have shown... If you upload stuff, make sure you social, show... Let me try that again. Make sure you show some site on stuff and it looks like it's on Sandpatch Grade. They need to learn caching, these guys. Talented triangles. It's a bit different. And there's a partially branded Conrail. What else is there? Just while that's loading, oh, we can go back. Here's an NJ Transit. Look at that. That should make you happy, NJTE. I don't know how long it's going to last with proper branding on it, but we'll see. <laughs> and it needs some required content that I don't have. Well, I don't have loaded anyway because I've actually got all the DLCs for this. But I don't load them all because switching back and forth is a pain in the bum when you've got them all loaded. It takes about two hours. I did have someone ask on my comments, um, how come I've got so much space available? 343 gig. Um, it's your local drive, that space. It's not what you've got in the dovetail thing. So that person had about 900 meg free and that would be their local drive. Yeah, someone's done a nice caboose, an eerie one, and it's they'd probably get away with that because they haven't done the complete branding. I'm quite liking what people are doing. There's a red CSX. Rio Grande F9A. Uh, someone's done the unmentionable. Oh, this is cool. Someone actually drew Big Boy on the side of a diesel. I'm impressed. That's just cool. A bit of effort went in there. I think I need this. We want to look at your 387 by the coast thing. Let's, just, let's keep flipping through deliveries for a moment because there's some really clever people in here. And I'm I'm deliberately not looking at the most popular because I want to see the other stuff. Here's another one with a brand on it that'll probably get killed. There's another one. There's a fully black gronk. A lot of people putting in some serious effort. Norfolk Southern one for CNJ with a Statue of Liberty on the front. Another BNSF one. People have been having some fun, haven't they? Last time I saw this, I don't know if it's this particular one, but Bombardier was spelt wrong. There's an Azuma. Kind of reckon that one will disappear. Some Turbot wagons. There's a colourful rail pool. 
people have really been going to some effort here. I'm impressed. What they do on that one? That looks normal. Is the uh, TGV? I guess that was only a matter of time. The Kodachrome one. It's quite a nice livery, that one. Sort of a fallen flag, sort of, sort of not. Looks like most people are concentrating on locomotives, but there's a bit of freight. I'll probably go through at some point and find some of the freight cars because it will be nice to have some variety popping up in the freight. It is a little homogenous at the moment. <laughs> Wally. There's another one that's going to disappear. There's a cool one. I like this one. Nice gears and things. Oh, and a screenshot on the move, and they use motion blur. I personally don't like motion blur, but that's okay. And you want to look at your scenario. Let's go have a look. Ah, we have to search. Scenarios. Post. 313's on the coast, 387 by the coast. So that'd be your one. So there's a few of those. Coast is a little bit popular, not a lot. Nothing. Yeah, so there's one for a Rosa. I was interested to see if people made scenarios for a Rosa. Because uh, that one's a single line running, it's kind of hard to make scenarios work. So I was kind of curious. Looks like this. Ah, oh, it's Sparmy. He's got lots of good stuff. Let's go look at his other stuff as soon as that subscribes. Because I want to see some colourful things start turning up in the game. Pumpkin Caboose. Good. Uh, let's go look at Chairman Hill. Timetable, January, pull everything. Oh, come on. You know, interesting in the SD40, you don't actually have problems. It's only in this thing. 848. Let's go look at it. Let's see what we can do. I'll get it set up and start it pumping brakes. Hey, stay on there, you. And even though it does nothing in the game, let's do reality and put it in notch one while we go and fiddle. And banking come. Now we're going for the long walk. All the way down the back. 
Has anybody else had trouble with the um, next cab, previous cab stuff lately? So if Mark B's still here, which I'm not sure if he is, he said he leaves the switches in the um, locos immediately behind the lead ones alone. So now we're going to go for the long, long, long walk. There's another way to solve this problem, by the way. Just yank that lever. Problem solved. Get up the hill every time. So I'm just heading down the back, Mark B, because I think you mentioned that you only change the ones down here. All the way at the back here. I actually think the problem I'm having with the keys, I like this station building, by the way, and I'm, I'm sad that it's fenced off and I'm sad that we can't have any passenger here because that would be kind of cool. Ooh, we can get in. No, you can't. It's got an invisible wall. Visible walls. Trudge, 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 trudge. Random missing snow bit. There's a few little spots here and there where the texture's wrong so it doesn't get snow on it. Hasn't got the right tags. Very patriotic truck off to our left there. No, I don't want to give it up. I'm just going for a walk in the snow because it's fun. Oh, they definitely push Kasinga, so I'm just going down there here to have a look because um, Mark B and I have been having a, a bit of an ongoing chat about this train and um, trying to get it to go properly. And Mark's had a couple of suggestions. And we've tried a few things and Mark's got definitely had it fly up over the hill, so it's time to give it a crack. I like the reflections in the side of the cars there. It's quite nice. There's little things like that that you see in TSW that it's just stuff you never see in TS. And you think, yeah, the graphics in here is pretty cool. Even if it does make my GPU get to the point where it's going to set fire to my house. When I was playing TS, I was um, getting a little cold here because it's only 18 degrees Celsius and I foolishly have the windows open. I'm sitting here in a t-shirt and shorts. But now that I'm playing TSW, no, it's warming up nicely because the uh, GPU's gotten up to about 65 degrees by now. It's pumping out some nice warm air. I like sitting next to my gaming computer on cold days. It's great. And weirdly, you could probably use the GPU to heat your house. Puts out an amazing amount of heat for something you put 300 watts of power into. It's a good thing we can use control zero to go back, isn't it? No, I don't want to give it up. I know it's been a long walk, but no. Do you know how long it took me to figure out that those are actually red signals? That was so annoying. Just cruising along and it goes, you've passed through a red signal. It's like, you what the? I think I see a glimmer of locomotive down there. This would be hard to walk on this surface. It would be sliding down sideways, but, you know, the game doesn't seem to care about that. Here we are. Let's go and see how this one is set up, and then we'll climb into the other one behind it. Oh, yeah, door. 
That was dumb, wasn't it? And I'll shut this because we'll come out the other one. Go all the way through on the locos. We Now, how are we set up up here for a start? Dynamic brakes on. It's set in run, which is correct. Its headlight switch is set wrong, but I don't really care about that at the moment. And I don't want to sit in the chair because it'll do bad things. Engine run on, generator field on, and fuel pump on. Okay. And brake pipe's coming up. So we're pumping. And it's set to lead. Oh, that's interesting. Can I set it to trail? No, because that doesn't, I don't think, change that. It just... No, it does. Aha. That might be interesting. Why was it set to lead? That's just wrong. But everything else is okay and interesting. What's this doing in here? Why is this here? It should not have a reverser handle in it. It really shouldn't. And what happens if I turn on banking com down here? Let's do that too. Shouldn't make any difference at all. Nothing should make any difference at all. But it probably does. Chain, chain, go through. Go on. Go through. Come on. Let me do it. I keep getting stuck on things then. Now, how are you set? No, oh, you're going to be down here. Engine run is on, gen field's off, which is actually right, that's what it should be. And control is on. So this, this engine was actually set up right. But what are its brakes set up as? Uh, air brake. No, I can't do it without sitting in the engineer's seat. I don't really want to do that because it'll do bad things up the end. Look, look, it's got a reverser again. What's going on? Why has it got a reverser? Bad dovetail. How's it set up here? So it's set for run, and its headlight switch is wrong too, but who cares? Distributed power is off. Oh, it's interesting. Does that make any difference? Probably not. Yeah, let's turn it on. <laughs> what could go wrong? What could go wrong? I'm going to go see what that switch is in this one. Actually, this one won't have that switch, will it? Because it's a different one. Let's go look anyway. How are you set up? AD. Traction control is on. No, that looks about right. Nothing exciting in there. So apart from its headlights being wrong. So is there anything else you do? Ah, uh, all locomotives have removable reverses. That is pretty much universal everywhere in the world. They have a removable or a keyed reverser. We're rolling backwards. How about that? Right. The front is not rolling backwards, but the back is. Go figure. And our reverse has gone into forward. And our throttle's gone to idle. Now, we didn't do that. Did we? No. All right. Back's pumped up anyway. No, no, it's still pumping. It's only on 64. So it's still pumping away back there. But given it started to roll, it's probably ready to release. Banking comp. Now, we, I turned that on. Did something I do at the other end make these changes? It's interesting. What's in my own fuses as well? What have I got in here? Uh, nothing exciting. It's turned off. No. Alright. Now, given the back was rolling, I'm guessing its brakes are 
started to release so we may as well give it a crack Kill the bell, Zebub. No one likes the bell. Well, I'm sure some people do. Let's put some lead sand on. Let's give the other tracks some sand as well. We are producing an amazing amount of power for Notch 2. Try notch three. Not moving at all. Yep, we are moving just very, very slightly. So it probably wasn't as ready in the back as I thought, but. You know, we'll get there. It's interesting it's making brake noises at this end. Oh, of course it is. Cool. And rail drivers decided to grab another notch. It's all right. You take over and drive, rail driver. And that's the results. Bad rail driver. Come on. Figure it out. There we go. So we've definitely got our real locos set up now while this is driving we're going to be naughty because i'll go and show you what i what i was doing in the other locos we should be going slow enough that it'll actually let me through here yep so these locos are definitely set up wrong because they should be like that but i don't think the game cares it doesn't look at it But it just makes me feel better to know they're set up right. So I'll do it. Oops. One more. I'm leaving the doors open for the hobos. We'll just leave all those doors open. Let locos fill up with snow. We should be able to take another notch by now. now. You guys can't see the rail driver, can you? I haven't got it on today. That's okay. The back's up to 70 now, so it should definitely be released down there. Still hasn't got enough for me to actually apply the brakes properly, but that's okay. Fifteen mile an hour should be safe for another notch. I do like the giggle factor on this route when um, you get to the point where you're going the slowest and the speed changes to 55 mile an hour for you to as if you ever actually could. Probably do it like Loco.
spot where I want to be. I want to be down here a bit. Come on. I don't know why it won't let me move. Oh, I'm stuck. All right, let's try that again. No, ah, still stuck. Let's try two instead. Come on, I want a couple of you. Can't I have a couple of you? No, I'm going to be stuck on that car again. All I want to do is see how hard they're pushing on the couplers, but I'm not going to get the chance to do that. Uh, we should be able to take our last two notches now without any dramas. Might help if I did a bit of horn action. A bit late, but you know, we got there. Now we wait. I forgot about this loco. The glass in the windscreen doesn't move as much as the cab does. It sort of leaves it behind. Oh, tricked my camera then. And random purple rabbit. Long story. waiting for the other locos to come past to see if there's smoke. I did see someone mention in the comments on one of the attempts at this that there were six locos, but I think there's five. Three on the front, two on the back. There's nothing in the middle that I've seen. Which there probably should be, just incidentally. There should be a mid-train pusher. In a moment, you're going to have to entertain yourselves with chair for a little while. So once these locos go past, I'm going to go take a quick nature break and I will be right back. I reckon there's four on the front, just fingers. Maybe I can't count. That is quite possible. I just had it in my head that there was three. Here they come. Yeah, Michael says four on the front as well. So I'm guessing I just can't count. And you... That's life. Yeah, there's smoke. They're definitely powering. And there's pushing. Those couplets are compressed. And I'm still stuck on this bloody wagon. I don't know how I got stuck on a wagon. What is going on? But what I can do is use two. And we'll come down here. Actually, maybe I can't do it with two. No. Can't because I can't interact. 
what I was hoping to do was get down there and have a look in the window and see how much power it said it was making. But since the three key is stuck on a wagon, I can't do that. But anyway, I'll be right back. So um, enjoy having a chat with Cher. I hope Chair wasn't rude. Definitely four. And apologies for running away, but it um, became necessary. He breached the one percent part. Lost a little bit of speed, no great surprise there. Damn it, there's a curve here. So you've got six SD70s. And I'm getting an AC44 chucked in the back. That's interesting. I wonder if that's it. You know, I'm actually tempted, because I think I have got Cane Creek installed. I'm vaguely tempted to uninstall it and start this again. Just to see if that makes any difference at all. Hmm. 
What do you reckon, folks? Do we try that? Yeah, I'm running out in front of this train, aren't I? We're never going to see it. I thought it would catch up, but no. We're going at the exact same speed. I'm kind of thinking we should try it. Kill Cane Creek and see how it goes. In fact, we're definitely going to try it. I'm just going to be right back mode. I'll keep the thing on. Because there's just too much danger of me getting this wrong. I'm getting in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble. Because I'm pretty sure I do have Cane... I do definitely have Cane Creek turned on. So let's get rid of it. It will take a moment while it does that. There we go. Has anybody noticed it's taking longer recently at that screen? So Cane Creek's gone now. So let's just make sure. Yep, Cane Creek's gone. Timetable, January. And you know what? I'm going to start recording this while I'm streaming it. Hopefully I am still streaming it. I am. And we're going to leave that alone. And we're going to go to the 848 Cheyenne Yard Hermosa Green. I think you might be on the right track there, Jacinius. I really think you are. So here we go again. Let's just get our brakes happening so that we can get this started cut in and lead good main brake off independence on uh, how come I could move that when it hasn't got a handle in it what's going on sigh Should run let's leave Jen off for the moment all right I am still streaming. That is good news. Now we have to go for a walk again, don't we? Just make sure our brakes are actually pumping up. They have got zip on the back so far. But it's lead and cut in. There we go. Rear's got one pound on it. That should be fine. Let's go for a nice quick stroll. Down the back. Whee! You enjoyed this walk before, didn't you? So we're going to enjoy it again. Yeah, we should do, just for variety. Do that one thing that a railroader would not ever, 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 ever do, and that's climb over the couplers. There's no chance in hell anybody in their right mind who works on a railroad or a railway would ever actually do that it's an awesome way to die or at least get your hands and feet cut off because when you get a bit of slack run out and it can even happen with a set that's been parked for ages you might have two or three brakes that are still holding on and then just as you climb over one of them releases and the springs push the carriages further apart and there you go, you just lost your fingers. I should have stayed over the other side, this side's boring. I love all the patches with no snow though. I kind of get this one, it's under a bridge. Well, I think the patch that's getting no snow isn't actually quite completely under the bridge, but that's all right.
I am going to be quite curious to see what's on the back. I think we had World War Three quite a while ago in JTE. The modern warfare is go and fight your big war in someone else's country. And I hope that doesn't happen, but, you know, let's try and keep politics out of it as well. I do very much uh, think of my friends in, in harm's way right now. But let's just concentrate on trains. We can pretend the world's just normal and it's all fine. At least for a couple of hours. Uh, there definitely would be to sing us, but I have not a lot of information for the AC-44s. I do have a book for the SD-70 kicking around somewhere in my endless pile of PDFs. There's actually quite a lot of information online. There's some quite good websites. So if you Google something like SD-70 Operator's Manual or AC-44 Operator's Manual, you never know what turns up. Sometimes you actually find them. Not always, but sometimes. Back when Arosa first came out and everybody was saying to um, not use the dynamics but to use the train brake, and I'm going, no, that's entirely wrong. I found the uh, Swiss Driver's Manual and translated it into English and read it, and then I was right. It was entirely wrong to be uh, breaking in the method that was being described. They were just doing that because it didn't make the train derail. Whereas in reality, they use Sawtooth, which is what every railroad uses on steep grades. You run on dynamics, you apply your train brake when the dynamics can't cope with it anymore. You bail off your locomotive brakes, you leave your train brakes applied until you have lost however much speed you want to leave and then lose and then you release them. Now look at that, we've got a couple of big beasts on the back now. Big hairy beasts. That's got padlock, but I could open it anyway. Close that because I'll use Control Zero to go back. All right, how is this set up? So it's in run, which is fine. And let's put our switches on. Now for this one, it actually should have the Gen Field on because this is pretending to have a driver in it. Now brakes are in trail, which is correct, so we'll just leave them alone. And we are pumping up quite nicely. And that's in handle off, which is correct. That's in released, which is correct. And banking comet doesn't matter on these locos, whether it's on or off. Might even confuse things if I turn it on, so I'll leave it alone. Let's go check out the other one. No, I don't want to give it up. It's like being at the burger restaurant. Do you want fries with that? No. Do you want fries with that? No. What about an ice cream? No. All right. So they're all off in this one. So this is mimic. This is um, what you found, Mark B. Is that they're all off, and that's in trail, which is correct, and it's not running as a DP, so that's fine. And reverser is out, released, and handle off. So those are correct, and this will be the same with banking come off. That's fine. And it's in run. Good O. Let's go back to the front. Why didn't control zero work? 
Maybe I'm confusing it because I'm inside a train. Let's go outside the train and try it. All right. Let's try and go up the other end. Now let's do control zero. Ha! I'm in. And did I turn on banking com here? I had not yet. I reckon we are going to barge up this hill without any trouble at all. Let's get some wipers going. We got lights on? We have got lights on. Controlling unit we coupled at the long end. I think that's right. That's not the switch I want. Controlling unit coupled long hold end. Yep, that's right. How are our brakes going down the back? 63. It won't be far off being able to move. In fact, you know what? We're actually going to... I think we might even try... Rail driver was still set in notch 8. That doesn't help. You know what I haven't done? <clears throat> I was never here. And once we start building up some power, I will release the independence. There it goes. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what speed we get up as our notches build, the singers. So we're getting some wheel slip now. Just give it some sand. We shouldn't really be pulling out in notch three. The rail driver jumped up there by itself. I think I might have to knock it back to two. No, there we go. It's fine. It got there. Let's get a window open. Let's get rid of the bell. What I think would be the big tell for me, I think the fastest it got with the Cane Creek Loco subbed in there was 32 mile an hour. If it goes faster than that, coming out of the yard, then um, I reckon we'll climb the hill, no trouble at all. Yeah, those things sound about right, just singers. He's, just singers is saying uh, roughly 11 mile per hour in notch six and 18 on the 1.5, so. creep grabbing some notches I am doing it much faster than you would do it in real life pulling a train that's still not completely released in the back and pulling out of the yard in notch 5 you would just snap the thing in half but that's not modelled in the game at least not this one the other uh, simulator I drive sometimes run 8, it's definitely modelled in that one, it's pretty easy to break your train in half in run 8 It's okay, I got what you meant. It's all good. On my side of the world, I just have speakos and I say dumb things. <laughs> Instead of having typos.
Yeah, I wanted one much and the rail driver gave me two. That's okay. Don't know why. It's worthy of a screenshot. Speed is still very slowly climbing up. As we get into the early part of the gradient. We've reached 31, so one more mile an hour, and that's the fastest it ever gets when it's got the Cane Creek locos in it. Let's see how it goes with a full population of what it's meant to have. Well, there's the highest speed that the other one gets to. So let's see if we get to 33, because if we do, I reckon it'll go up the hill fine because it means it's got a lot more power. Be nice to have some variety in these hopper cars, wouldn't it? They're all a little homogenous. It's interesting, I've got a little bit of brake cylinder pressure on still. 0.2. Oh, we dropped. They look like they're powering. Let's try not to get stuck on a hopper car this time, huh? Why don't you go up? This is where I wanted to get before. Yeah, they're, they're definitely pushing because you can see a gap in there between the knuckles. So they're pushing very hard. Let's have a look in the windows. If I can get down again. Oops, too far. Yeah, definitely powering. You can see it there, 49. And they're powering just as hard as the ones at the front are. Good out. sad to say but I've kind of run out of things to say about this route because do you have any idea how many times I've done this particular run lately
Just got a text message that apparently my Amazon Prime at 99.99 US is uh, going to be automatically renewed. And if I don't want to continue this, I should ring this number. It's like, yeah, I really don't think so. I do actually have Prime, but yeah, it's about $17. So. I think I kept all the footage of my previous attempts, so um, maybe I should do a side-by-side. -side. Do a video with the Cane Creek Loco subbed in and with the Cane Creek Loco not subbed in, side-by-side, -side, and just see how they go. I reckon that would be kind of interesting. What do you lot reckon? How nicely wetted these ones, they look quite good. Hello, train. mixed I could try some other side-by-side -side concepts too, like um, putting the locos from Sandpatch on here using off-the-rails scenario. I'm not sure if you can put in the same size consist though, because it's got a completely different drive and braking system. Be interesting to see how they cope. All right, so we've reached a refinery. This is the point where we went. Hey, let's get rid of Cane Creek and start again. We're actually, I think, going slower than we were then. Maybe we should steal those two locos over there and put them on the back.
wife and her friend have just come home from her work. It's a nice little substation. Yeah, I've never actually noticed that before. How about that? Where are we on the map? So in, in previous attempts, I've gotten up near the quarry before it's failed, so we're a while away from that. It's probably a good uh, 15, 20 minutes or so to get up there. At least the uh, snow sitting on the grass does calm down the Sherman Hill frame rate. We're doing all right up there. Sitting in the high 60s, low 70s. It's pretty good. good thing about run, not running a German train is you can go outside and go and sit somewhere. There you go. Go sit over here. It's as near as we can get to that place. Wait for our train to come. Just be some random rail fan. How many tons on the train? We have got... No, that's not going to help. We have got... 13890... And of course, that's American tons, not real tons. Real tons, it's about 7,000. I have seen those funny conversations on forums sometimes that they'll look at an Australian train and it's... 8,000 tons and they go oh ours are much bigger and I go well you know they're actually not they're about the same size different measurement systems plus a little bit of speed and you can just see from the creeping lines of pixels over on the uh, HUD there that we are very, very slowly losing more. And we are in the steepest part, layer, the 1.5. I don't think it goes any higher than 1.5, but... We haven't reached the 1.2 middle bit yet. I'm not actually 100% certain that the British concept of a short ton and an American ton are the same. I've never really figured that out. Never. They might be. I'm not sure. There's just so many different places that use different measurement systems and they use the same words. I remember when I worked in America and doing a project for the Metropolitan Transit Commission, which runs transit in the entire Bay Area around San Francisco. So it's pretty much everything from Sacramento down almost to Los Angeles is the area they cover, um, all the way down to Orange County. But the all of our drawings for all of our machines and things were always in metric. 
And MTC didn't like that. We had to redraw them all so that they were all in Imperial. And now that's really easy. You sit there in AutoCAD and you go click and it just changes them all. It didn't used to be that easy. I am talking about the uh, early 2000s, by the way. Software is quite different these days. Just jumping back in the cab in preparation of the wheel slip because I want to see what the loco says. Because if there's real wheel slip, there will be a thing lighting up here that says so. And if it's flickering, so if this, you can just barely see it says wheel slip there. When that lights up, if it's flickering, um, that's, I believe, when the loco is controlling it. It's when it goes solid on. That's when I believe the loco is unable to control it and you have to reduce your power. So at the moment we haven't got anything else going. We've got the truck sand is turned off. We don't have a sander pressed. We're not doing any monkeying with uh, independent brakes at the moment. There's some wheel slip, and it is solid on on there, so it probably is real. Are we getting any sparks? No, no sparks as yet. So, in response, I'll chuck on lead truck sand and see if that does anything. I suspect it won't. We're not really losing speed. We've just got an indication of wheel slip, so... I'm just going to let things be for the moment. It certainly indicates that what um, Jusingus is saying there is what the game calls wheel slip, but it's not actual wheel slip. That would certainly appear to be the case, because if we were getting significant wheel slip, I would expect our speed to be going down, and it's not. Hello, Aiden. How are you? Yeah, we finished looking at the German route and then we started getting into a discussion about Sherman Hill and wheel slip and stuff. And so we came over here and started to play this. And we've got Jasingus and Mark B in the chat who has... We've been having a, a good conversation about uh, what's going on here. And we did discover that um, I had the Cane Creek DLC installed which meant I was actually losing one of my SD70s and it was being replaced by another loco that's um, of a lesser power. And that is probably the cause of the problems. And the most recent discussion we've had with Jasingus is that while the train is currently indicating wheel slip, it probably isn't in significant wheel slip. So it's getting it, but the computer's taking, the train's computer's taking care of it. So we're not losing power. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I think it's it's definitely not actually happening. And I suspect this is, it's the loco's, so it's getting wheel slip, but the loco is handling it. When, when you start getting the flickery wheel slip symbols, that's when we'll start losing speed. But we can just leave this the way it is at the moment. You notice that it's gone on, off and on a couple of times there. Yeah, see, it's flickering. And it's gone now. So we're, we're back down to... We're at the 1.2% gradient anyway, and we're not too far off going back to the 1.5 again. Yeah, we've been having a good time, Aiden. We also went and had a look at Creators Club and had a look at some of the uh, members of the chat who've contributed some content, so we went and looked at their stuff. And we've had a look at some of the really amazing liveries that people are putting up. We've had a look at some of the really amazing liveries that will probably get deleted by DTG on Monday because they've got real branding that they shouldn't have. But that's life. I guess there's only one way people are going to learn that lesson, but they do give a little bit of mixed messaging, though. 
because you get messaging from people like Matt and JD and Nat and they say if you put up branding that's not acceptable we'll delete it and then you get Sam going well if you don't ask the question then I don't have to give you the answer which sort of implies that if you put it up and no one notices it's fine but I'm kind of tipping that they're going to be quite protective of this at least now while it's new who knows what what the future will bring and there's quite a few things there for branding that's not on the list so I reckon they'll just vanish Very screenshot worthy. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that. I'm thinking the poor little AC4400 was the problem. I don't know if you've ever watched these, but um, let me go onto the three cam because you'll better see it better. The trucks on these actually move. Not all of them do this, but these ones are quite nicely animated. So you get you get individual wheel bounce, and you also get the um, trucks themselves are moving up and down, which I, I quite like. It's a nice attention to detail. I'd love it if the chains rolled around a little bit, but yeah, you can't have everything. Actually, thinking about it, given that we've got the lead truck sand switch on, at least I think we put it on, and there is nothing coming out of there, is there? Let's just have a quick look. Have we got it on? Yeah, we have. Oops, three. So there's nothing coming out of there. What happens if I press the sand button? No, nah, it's not animated. That's why we can't see it. I guess the other aspect of mixing the locomotive types to seeing us is they would have different traction control systems. And if if you had one kind at the front and the other kind at the back or a different kind is in DPU, that's probably not that big a deal. But if you had them hooked to each other with one controlling the other one, that might come into play. I don't know if the people who wrote the simulation really thought that through and if that's built into the simiograph system, but hey, it might be. They've done some other stuff that's really clever, so yeah, it's quite possible that they have done that. We're we losing a bit of speed again. I think sand does actually help to sing us. It's not animated. But I think it does make a difference if you get into wheel slip, because if you hit the sand button, often the wheel slip does go away. Not always, but often.
Yep. There's our pseudo wheel slip again. Right at about the same point we got it last time. We're on our way up the hill. Not there yet. What I do want to do, just to see for amusement value, let's just put a tiny bit of independent on. Hasn't reached the brake cylinder yet. There it goes. So it does solve that problem. It does make that go away. So that was Mark B's suggestion, is pop a little bit of independent on. So if I take that off again, we get the slip back straight away. So that does suggest that's doing that. And if I press the sand button, nothing, which suggests that is doing pretty much zip. Interesting. Which does tend to lend a lot of credence to what you're talking about there, Jasingus, that uh, the sand doesn't do anything, at least on this route. already bled off again so no it probably wouldn't hurt me um it shouldn't having that really light brake application actually shouldn't cost you any speed to be honest because the locomotive should just overpower it we're not talking huge amount here we're talking the tiniest little bit so three percent's not enough Three pounds isn't enough to do it. Tiny bit more. Yeah, four pounds is enough. And that, that's about half a brake application. And it's only on the loco. <laughs> and there we go, he's slipping again. Let's give it a tiny bit more. Now that's 6.8 is a minimum brake application. I actually would have expect this. Yeah, see, and it's knocked it down to 17. So putting on that much brake, I absolutely would expect to uh, bring your speed down. Oh, I agree to singers, yeah. But you, you, in in real life, if you put three pounds on the brake cylinders, um, I don't think you'd even feel it in the loco. I just don't think you would. Mind you, it's pretty hard to put three pounds on because braking systems are done with feed valves. They tend to feed in mostly in seven pound increments. Driven a bit more than a hundred miles, game. Just a bit. <laughs> That's what happens when you swap builds back and forth all the time. The game gets a little bit confused about your statistics. That's life. Yeah, I kind of reckon at this point, the way it's behaving, that we could just walk away for the next two hours and come back and find it's 
sitting at a Moser, having run through the red signal and spattered. <laughs> Interestingly, the um, accelerometer does actually slow that we show that we're slowing down, but I don't really see an indication of that in the HUD. That's why in the video I put up yesterday, I um, kept just chopping it. And then I put it together later so people didn't have to do the grind part. interesting watching the HUD. I don't know if the resolution's high enough to see it on the stream. I'm pushing at it 2K, so depending on what you're watching it, it might be. But the um, speed display, the, the line, moves up and down at about the same rate that the blue line moves up and down on the tractive effort. Which sort of suggests to me slip and the loco backs off a little bit, then it powers and it gets slip and it backs off a little bit and it powers and it gets slip and it backs off a little bit. So yeah, I reckon it's controlling it. It's managing to slip by itself. And you're not hearing any big bangs and crashes from the couplers, which would suggest that it's all fairly nicely pushing together and Mark's just said in the chat that at this point he was at notch 6 at 12 mile an hour yeah I could certainly believe that and you probably wouldn't have the wheel slip then because you're not putting as much power onto the track interesting let's just peer in our back window I'm curious if the back loco is reacting as well and no it doesn't look at the tractive effort on the loco it's just stuck on 85 constant so it's only the front loco that's experiencing slip I think Which brings it into line with what I would expect from reality, is that the back ones would not have any problem with tractive effort because they're on totally clean rail. Who knows what's in them in JTE? Actually, it is a grain train. No, we do know what's in them. It's grain. So it could be wheat, could be barley. 
I guess corn's classified as grain from a transit perspective. Corn would be a popular thing to move around in the US for um, making ethanol. Because anybody who works in the water industry or the water treatment industry would know that there's no point eating corn because um, it comes out the other end. It's good for making alcohol. Yeah, it's an interesting question, just singers. I'll chuck the question into the um, beta team chat, but I'm not sure if I'll be allowed to share the answer or not, but I will ask the question and I will ask if I'm allowed to share the answer. And if I am, I'll uh, either, either put, a, put a comment onto this video later or I'll um, mention it in an upcoming stream. Uh, it would indeed, just sing us. I'd, I'd actually um, love to see Simeograph running on a second screen. I reckon that would be cool. Just interesting to see what it's doing and how it's reacting to things. I think it'd be kind of fun. But I can't see that happening for the simple reason that that is the key difference in intellectual property between Dovetail's current simulator product and other people's. And I really couldn't see them wanting to let that out anywhere and show it to people any more than the superficial glances that we get on stream occasionally. I just couldn't imagine they'd do it. And I completely understand why they wouldn't want to do it. The last thing you need is your competitors stealing your important bits. This, interestingly enough, by the way, is why I don't play a lot of American long-haul freight. When I'm doing American stuff, I generally do switching. Because nothing happens. We're fast approaching the point where in my previous runs it's all turned to poo. So it's about the 20 mile mark that it all just goes bad. So we're not far off that. So I kind of think if we get past that, so if we get down to, I don't know, 18, 19 miles to go, what I'll probably do is... Um, drop the stream about that point but I'll keep it recording and I'll, I'll make a, um, a video for it later today and pop it up because there's not that much sense in us all sitting here watching it doing pretty, pretty much nothing <laughs> oh, here comes some power At least the rear headlights aren't on. It's always slightly embarrassing when you see the train go past and the headlights are on. Guns will spot. Oh, it's got a fence. They 
ruined the gunsel spot. Right, here we go. <laughs> yep. Nice one, good singers. <laughs> That was kind of me yesterday afternoon, just running run after run after run after run, trying different things to see what happens. And I never twigged on the uh, change of the locos. So well done you. question in JTE. I always use the rail driver. <laughs> it's always in the same place on mine. The um, switches that you don't use very often tend to be on the right hand side of that loco. So have a look on the right hand side of the door and see if there's a button there for it. If there isn't, look up on the left hand side up above the window and in that column that's to your left there. So what we'll do next week, particularly since I had nothing scheduled, is we will look at Creators Club stuff and I'll um, do a selection of people's scenarios. So I'll try and find some time to find some decent ones during the week. And yes, NJTE, I'll run one of yours. And we'll um, try and cram in some other people's liveries and see how we go. I have to do some stuff for the ambassador thing during the week too. And eat and sleep and work and do stuff around the house and you know how it is. How do you find time for all this stuff? How do you become an ambassador? I got picked up because of my tutorials. I've made, I think, I don't know, about 60 odd tutorials. No, that's good, just singers. What horsepower per ton did you come out with with the um, SD70s and the AC44 in the mix? Because with the SD70s, I come out at 1.4, which should be about, you know, that's not great, but it's enough. American tons, by the way. It's overpowering to compensate for their underpowered brother or sister or whatever. So what are rail fans called in your part of the world? Here we, um, when people are being friendly, we use the word rail fan, and when people are being a little bit derisive, we use the word gunzel. Yeah, I'll do the um, horsepower per ton calculation later. I've got a little spreadsheet that does it. It's a bit hard to do in your head when you've got different horsepower ratings on the different locos. 
Uh, pros and cons of being an ambassador in JTE. You do get access to be able to stream stuff about four hours before it hits the PlayStations, which are the first ones that get it. So that's at 8 p.m. my time, and the PlayStation people get it at midnight. So I get, get the jump on other people who stream. Um, you get a little bit of access before that, so you can learn the route, you can learn the locomotive, so you get a couple of days with them. Now, that, that's not actually a, an advantage for me because, um, yeah, I see stuff that I can't talk to you about, but a lot earlier than that. So it's good for the ambassadors, but it doesn't really worry me. And there are sometimes initiatives where you can get access to keys to give away, which I haven't finished one of those initiatives yet. I'm working on one at the moment. So hopefully I will actually... Um, have some keys that, or at least a key or a couple of keys that I'll be able to give away at some point. And that would be good. And if you put in enough effort and maintain, you'll get some keys for yourself as well. Uh, there probably isn't a downside to it, to be honest. Uh, I'm still allowed to review the content and say whatever I want. The only requirement they have is that I be constructive in any criticism that I have, and I tend to do that anyway. I'm just not the kind of person that just goes on about something I hate. I'd, I'll give what, the way I think it should be done and I'll give um, reasons for why I think something could be better. And I'm quite happy to say there are things in TSW2 that could definitely be better. But there's also a lot of things in it that are right. So, you know, if you temper the good with the bad, swings and roundabouts, they're quite happy. Um, for any DLCs that you get for free, you may have noticed in my descriptions, I do actually have to say that I got them for free. Oops, Mr. Road Crossing, naughty me. FRA will be after me now for not honking. So there's there's not really any particular cons to it. There's effort that you have to go to. You have to keep contributing. If you don't keep contributing, you won't stay in it very long. So there's an initiative at the moment that um, I've started writing up what I'm going to be doing for it and working out a bit of a plan. And good luck seeing what my writing was from that uh, two or three frames you just got of it. <laughs> Wish I could smooth out my trackball so it tracked nicer. But I'm also the kind of person who would be described as a serial volunteer and I like helping out my communities, various things. So I did 15 years in one of the world's biggest youth organisations. I won't name them because I'm not in it anymore. Um, I volunteer on a railway. I help out every now and again on a couple of other ones. So just helping out with this is just sort of a natural extension of stuff that I do, really, because I was already making the tutorials. It's not as though I'm going to stop. Uh, depends on the content. So for um, third-party stuff that's through DTG, you can. For third-party stuff that's from someone else, um, like... RSSLO, for example, with um, the route that I ran earlier this morning in this stream. No.
So this is where some random liveries would come in handy. Just cover about 80% of these in different graffiti. That'd be great. But I hate to think what having 80 different liveries would do to your frame rate. I suspect that might become a bit of an issue. In fact, I think you can only have 30 different liveries on any given route, I think. Or is it the whole game? Might be any given route, I think. Uh, look, I really suspect you could. Um, you do have a contract in JTE, so if you were in breach of that contract, I think that would be very swift consequences. You don't actually have to say you're an ambassador either. I just sort of choose to. You don't actually have to. I know some of the other ones that are in the ambassador group that I see um, who are regular streamers. They don't necessarily make a big deal out of it, but I find it's handy for building my channel. My new subscriber rate's gone up a bit since I started putting that up there, so it's helpful for me. Yeah, Rob does. I won't call out the ones that don't because, you know, they've obviously got their reasons. Yeah, we're not slipping anymore, you notice that? And we're at the fateful 20 mile mark where the three come into two. This is where it's all gone bad in the past. Right here. <laughs> and I'm not slipping at all. It's interesting that my attractive effort's gone down. It's actually on these points that I've lost it in the past and it's just sailing straight through them. Of course, Americans call them switches. But if you look at the whole thing, all right, so from there through to up there, that's a switch. And they're often referred to as points. But the actual points, and these are often called switch blades, the two sort of partial rails that are in here, but those are the points. Those are, why? Because they are pointy. That sounds silly, I know, but that actually is why they're called points. That's okay. It's actually a fairly nicely modeled point machine. That's a Westinghouse. We use the same ones. These ones haven't got their um, hand throw handles fitted to them, though. Normally, they're... I love the... Um, 
big white sleepers. It's kind of cute. Um, normally there'd be a cabinet here with the hand throw handles in it. Yeah, I haven't seen that club NJTE, but yeah, it's um, important for people who run community clubs and forums to um, keep a bit of a lid on that sort of behaviour. Because if you keep a lid on it, it will never reflect bad you on, badly on you as a community owner. And you'll get a lot of respect from a gaming company for running a community. It's, if, especially if you keep a bit of... Um, bit of control over it so that people are doing the right thing and not going mental, not claiming to be who they're not and not saying ridiculous things but if you don't do that then um, you can't expect your community to get any positive attention from the gaming company and it's no different to anything else really um, if Oh, we're getting a little bit of wheel slip again. If you look at um, some of the railways I'm involved in, and I won't call out any specific ones for the same reasons why I wouldn't call out a gaming company, um, there is always politics. It never goes away. It's always there. And it's how you manage that politics as a community owner or a community moderator that um, will will stand you aside from the others and you'll either be seen in a positive light or a negative light depending on what your own actions and what you do about it and there's nothing wrong with people having their own viewpoints and there's nothing wrong with people talking about their viewpoints i'm highly supportive of free speech but there is reality is that there can be consequences when you say things that are just plain wrong yeah, it's cool njt I don't actually have an Xbox. I, I've kind of contemplated getting the Xbox S, to be honest with you, but um, this is a house full of PlayStations. I'd probably get looked at a bit sideways if I had an Xbox. Another hmm, train. What have we got? Auto racks. And he's going just a little bit faster than we are. He's a little bit. Yeah, the X is also a lot more expensive and a lot harder to get. The S is really easy to get. And after the warranty runs out on the Xbox, I'd quite happily crack it open and put a bigger SSD in it anyway. I have a drive cloner. If you don't have a drive cloner, which would be unusual, but I move stuff around on laptops a bit, so I have one. Um, most of your places that sell SSDs, or even hard disks for that matter, will have a drive cloner, and you can take your drive in there and get it cloned onto the new one. It's a good deal, the, the, the X. It is a very good deal. Even though it's, a, it's an expensive device, but it's about the same power as my gaming PC. And my gaming PCs oh, it's, it have close to 4,000 Australian dollars hardware in it. When I count it all up. It gets scary when I count it all up. And whereas the Xbox is, you know, it's a third of that. So for the money you pay, you get an excellent outcome for gameplay. I know you'll sound think this is heresy, but I actually think the um, PS5 is the better console. 
but the Xbox X is the better deal overall. So I think at this point I will probably close down the stream but I'll keep this going on recording I'm pretty sure I am recording it and I'll I'll pop up a video with the juicy bits later on and um, we'll see how we go because at this rate to get that 14 miles that's nearly an hour it's probably another 45 minutes to get there and I don't, can't imagine that you guys want to sit there and watch just this for 45 minutes well maybe you do maybe you don't I do have to get on with my work because I have to do some some PVT on a new system and I promised I'd start that at 11 and it's 11.49 my, my time right now so I have not started the work and I've got about four hours to do for that so I will get on with that I think but anyway it's been absolutely awesome having you guys in the chat and Gasingas and Mark B and Steve who tends to watch on catch up later on um, really really good community support for um, finding out why Sherman Hill wasn't doing its thing and it gives me something positive to go back to dovetail with which is great so I think we're there we're all good so NJTE awesome conversation thank you Michael thank you as always and who else have we had kicking around today we've had a few we've had Chicago who had to go and we had before we also had um, we had well Mark B's still here I think and we had yeah Chicago was here who else was hanging around today we had Epic the 112 he or she pop up occasionally and have a bit of a chat so good to see them and who else did we have today just scrolling back through the chat we had Jonah, who had to go. I do realise my streaming time is a bit difficult for some people, but it works for my family. All right. Well, have a, an awesome day, folks. I know most of you, your um, Saturday's finishing up and you've got Sunday to look forward to. My Sunday's halfway through. So, yeah, we did have Aiden. You're right, Michael. Thank you. Very good pickup. I didn't want to miss him out because he's a, a, a constant contributor. All right. Well, thanks very much, folks, and enjoy yourselves, and I will see you next week, and I'll probably chuck up some more videos during the week because I'm me. Have fun, people. See you later. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I always like to get your feedback in the form of likes and comments because they help me understand what you want. Give the channel a subscribe and click on the tinkly things so you don't miss out on any new stuff. And thanks for your ongoing support. And please, be safe out there.